Ah, yes, 1520, the great tournoir with my brother Henri. Camp de Dradeau was a spectacle to behold, but don't be fooled. Scratch the surface of the splendour and extravagance and you'll find our long-held distrust and rivalry. In my opinion, it went on too long and cost too much, around 63,000 of your English pounds. In your 21st century, around 32 million of your English pounds. At least I was not in Henri's company all the time, so the facade was maintained, n'est-ce pas? Already a year later than planned, I was suspicious of your king with all his delays. Did he intend to set our alliance aside in the flavour of our sworn enemy, the Spanish Emperor Charles? So I said no when he asked for yet another delay. It must be June and no later. My wife's delicate condition was the clincher. In truth, I was a little nervous when told by my spies of the secret meeting between Emperor Charles and Henri. It did not bode well for a lasting entente cordiale. Not to be outdone, I did a petit posturing of my own. It may have slipped out that we were readying our naval might. That caused him a change of codpiece for sure. Ah, mon ami, it was but a trick. And so I wrote under my great seal to confirm the Norman and Breton fleet would remain in port. The timing was still not good. My queen should have been lying in. The travel, too much excitement. No, not ideal. Heavy with child, yet she could always be relied upon. By all accounts, she was an excellent hostess to Henri. I was grateful that in her condition she was safe from his attentions. The whole charade was show the, to the world. England and France were allied and to reinforce the 1518 Treaty of London. With some 25 European signatures, we must at least look the part. It had to be hoped that a peace could exist between us, especially having agreed a marriage between your Princess Mary and my heir, the Dauphin Francois. As part of the deal, we managed to claw back tonight though not without a king's ransom. I had taken in good spirit the challenge that we would not shave until we met. I was rather proud of my fulsome and glossy beard, but sly Henri did not keep his word. He thought to undermine me even before we met. Mon mère was not impressed. She made her voice heard to Thomas Berlin, the Anglais ambassador. Mon mère, Louis of Savoy, is a force of nature. It is a brave man indeed who incurs her wrath. Arrangements for the event were full of, uh, I would say, red tape. I was kept abreast of the progress. Your Cardinal Wolseley was a very efficient man. I would have liked this man for myself. The location was an issue. My advisers did not want the royal party outside French territory. Oh, how it irked that the Anglais claimed any part of French soil. Pa! Celavi, the valley in the Pale of Calais, it would be. Pourquoi? Henry would be foolish to risk our tenuous peace, no. Just in case we Francais outnumbered you Anglais <laughs> two to one. Next, there was the issue of, or rather lack of, facilities. The chateau near Calais was too small as to the one in Adra, so a table that a temporary village be created in the Val d'Or. Landscape to ensure neither had the upper hand, our supporters flanked the valley. I will admit to feeling a little perturbed as the Anglais approached, mistaking their shiny garb for armour. I, unfaced, approached, and how the crowds roared when we two embraced as brothers. I wore the very latest in French haute couture, dressed in cloth of gold studded with precious stones, with a velvet bonnet adorned with plumes and precious stones. I eclipsed only. You, Anglais, do not travel lightly, n'est-ce pas? Four thousand arrived in Henri's entourage, along with two thousand chevaux. 
Oh, not forgetting the hounds and hawks. Sacre bleu, did the Queen really need more than a thousand attendants and another 780 chevaux? Oh, and 200 cooks? Our accommodation numbered some 400 tents. Claude, my sister Marguerite and I each had our own magnificent faux palace, covered in gold, <laughs> naturellement, plus a grand pavilion resplendent with images of Saint Michel, with a ceiling full of stars like the night sky. Unlike the Anglais, we were savvy and also a substantial base in Adra. If I, the greatest Renaissance prince, could not defeat the English king in battle, I intended to excel in the tournée. I would be superior in all things and making Pichance think twice before waging war with the might de la Francais. My prowess with skill at arms and chivalry in all pageants and jousts would surpass those of Henri. Almost daily we would meet at the Grand Tilt and take on the other challengers or simply be entertained. I was no stranger to the tilt, not so Henri, who said he dirt his wrist. Pa! So I think I was the victor. I too was injured, a small black eye from a loose headpiece on my mount, <laughs> never from the spear. We kings enjoyed some sport with each other, although nothing fierce, no. Loss of pride to either of our countries was too fragile to risk. So I was surprised when Henri challenged me to a wrestle. <laughs> Et voilà, I won. The routine of Sunday banquets, hosted by the other king's queen, was most enjoyable. I liked the company of the ladies. My famous petit bon were never far from my side. Neither was the sweetheart of the king, Francois de Foix, Comtesse de Chateaubriand. Good food and wine, dancing and merriment were enjoyed by all. I am renowned for my skills in la danse, excelling in the French and Italian style. But you know what I enjoyed the most? was those small golden minkies Henri left with his queen. <laughs> they made me laugh so. Mon Dieu, but you Anglais, you eat too much. And I did not approve of your fountains of wine, your booze cruise mentality. <coughs> At the end of the evening, I gallantly kissed all the ladies, except the old and ugly ones. Ah, I almost felt sorry for the peasants, when they for three days they were drenched and blown from their feet in the rain and wind. It was almost as good a sport as the tilt. We sensibly retired to our stone chateau. The final Saturday, Yol Woolsey led mass in a grand chapelle erected at the tilt in the course of just one night. Henri and I then dined together, as did our queens and the cardinals. It was to be applauded that all ate at the same time. Those 200 cooks were worth bringing after all. Finally, Sunday the 24th of June, we dined with our rivals queens once more and engaged in mask, dancing, frivolity, fun and much gift giving. The queens rewarding the brave and victorious of the opposing side all very generous. I too had been generous with gifts to Henri of chevaux, hawks, gold and jewels. <laughs> Mon Dieu, too much to remember. The finale, a grand fireworks display. Ah, this would long be remembered by all who attended. The event over, we parted as friends and I was hopeful for a lasting peace. The party of the century, never to be witnessed again. Mon mère was so enamoured, she wanted a village built to forever remember the spectacle. Ah, but it was not to last. That viper, Henri, left my brotherly bosom to nestle in that of the Spanish Emperor Charles. Pa! So I ordered the remains of the four court to be torn down. Au revoir, Henri, but have a care. We will emerge victorious. Vive la France!